this guy. I'll say this. I don't like the Barkley move. I love the Bryce Huff, and I think the extension of Dickerson spectacular. But there's a pivot here in the organization. Let's bring John McMullen on. John, thank you so much on a busy day. I appreciate this so much. Um, John, I just mentioned something here about the Eagles pivoting. For an organization that really doesn't value the running back position, that pretty much changed this offseason here, didn't it? I mean, do you see them potentially also pivoting a little bit in value at the linebacker position? Does this now open that up? to where you could see them potentially spending money on a guy like Queen? Boy, man, you know, this is shaking my core belief in the Me Eagles. Too. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I, I, I can't even believe this signing um, from a standpoint of how this organization has done bu business in, in previous years. Now, I always go back to 2017. And I tell people all the time, now they finally believe it, that uh, uh, Albert Breer, I think, reported it uh, last year. The Eagles were going to take Christian McCaffrey in 2017. So they would have shocked the world if he fell. They were they were 14. He didn't even come close. I think he won eight overall. But they were going to take him. They loved the player that much. And it had to do more with his ability as a receiver. Um and not just catching the football. He's a tremendous route runner. I remember people from the Eagles telling me at the combine he was he was the best route runner there. Not you know, receiver. Forget about running backs. He's a better route runner than than the receivers. Um, he was just a different player. Boy, I think what they saw in San Francisco this year, and they said what kind of impact he has on that particular team. Let's try to get the closest to it. And boy, I just think they misevaluate the player. I mean, he's a very good player. Don't get me wrong, Saquon Barkley, but he's not that guy. I'm with you, John. Look at his last four years. If you look at his numbers the last four years, that's a 15 with incentives, million dollar priority on your team when you've got so many other priorities on the other side of the ball. Help me. Help me understand it. I, I'm not getting I'm, I'm, it. I'm, I'm trying to understand it. I'm not going to be much help there. I also get kind of a dream team vibe. Last time I checked, you still have A.J. Brown. You still have Devontae Smith. You still have Dallas Goddard. You still only have one football. So now you're putting this incredible pressure on the new offensive coordinator as well to get everybody involved, to keep everybody happy. Um you're in the city of Philadelphia who always wants to run the football. Uh, it's going to be a very difficult needle to, to thread for Kellen Moore. Um, so I get a little bit of a dream team vibe on top of it. But you're now, if you give me rookie Saquon Barkley, I'm, I'm, I'm so all right. He hasn't been that since he injured himself. Um, doesn't have the same explosion, not the same player. Now, I think it's fair to point out when you look at his poor numbers last year, all right, that was a terrible offensive line, even a worse quarterback situation once Daniel Jones went down. Um, so if you want to brush that off, I'm fine with it. I, I just don't – what they're telling me is this guy is special. This He's guy not. is significantly better than, remember, they had a thousand yard runner last year, DeAndre Swift. Two years ago, they had a 1200 yard rusher. You're in Miles Sanders. You're telling me he is significantly better than them. I think he's better, but I don't think he's significantly better than them. How about this, John? I got a feeling that that DeAndre Swift sign up in a crappy ass Chicago has got Miles Sanders 2.0 all over it. I mean, you're going to have a rookie quarterback, a defensive-minded coach, you have no O-line, and you're paying that guy $10 million bucks. Are you more shocked with that sign? or No, I can't even throw that at you because I'm more shocked with the Barkley and, Eagle, and Philadelphia sign than I am even with that. And doesn't it also show you, John, that the official cheat day, which is today, 
That deal was not consummated today. That deal was consummated two weeks ago because if the Eagles, as reported, offered him a $6.5 million contract, you don't turn that down making one five, John, when you know that there's another buyer and there's a potential markets out there that want to pay you $10 million. This deal was done a couple of weeks ago. Do you agree? Oh, well, everything starts in Indianapolis. I mean, that's where you you know, people, people, people say legal tampering. It, it, this is actually a legal negotiating period. It's not tampering. You're allowed yeah. to negotiate. The, the, the legal tampering happens in Indianapolis. Yeah, I mean, look at Kirk Cousins today. Another massive deal. That guy's first ballot business Hall of Famer. <laughs> He he wasn't, you know, he knew this was coming. You know, Minnesota was trying to get him at a, a more cost-effective price, and that's God bless Kirk, man. He 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 maximizes everything he can. Um, and he this got guy had a ski method. mask on today, John, when he got that deal in Atlanta. I, I you know, thirty-six years old, he's going to be coming up an Achilles, um, and he's getting that kind of money from the Atlanta Falcons now. You know, from Minnesota's perspective, they have nothing. I mean, they're going to go looking for Sam Darnold or something. So it's a disaster for them. But, you know, how do you pay a guy like that what Atlanta paid for it? So I I understand why they turned the page. I just, my buddy Andrew Brandt calls them business Hall of Famers. There has never been anybody better than Kirk Cousins at maximizing his value. What that I, make- I tip my hat to him. What do you make of the Bryce Huff sign? I don't mind it. I, I, I do think it's about projection. You know, I was looking, he's never played he, last year. He had a career high 480 snaps and he only played 47% of the snaps. Does that tell you yeah. anything else? Do you read more into that also? Well, he's an emerging player. He's undrafted. He never got a chance to play. He, he really produced in a limited fashion. So it's all about projection. Hassan Reddick has had, six seasons where he's played more than 480 snaps every season. So what you're trying to do is get a little bit younger, a little bit more cost effective and have them for a longer period of time. And if it works great, you know, you move into that seamlessly. Is he going to be a son Reddick in that kind of production consistently? It's a big, it's a big projection. I will say that. Um, Hassan played 900, I I believe it was 910 snaps last year. He played 490. Um, He's not good against the run. Right now he's a one-trick pony. He's great at rushing the passer. But is he a three-down player? Much to be proven. But right now they have Reddick, Sweat, Bryce Hopp at 17 million. Um and you got to get Nolan Smith on the field, and you still have Brandon Graham. Obviously, at the bare minimum, one of them, Sweat and Reddick, is going to be gone. And because Huff plays on the left side defensively against the right tackle, it's probably going to be Reddick. And with the market value for next year, right now, currently, Sweat's got a $21 million market value. When you're talking – and the amount of reps – you talk about reps, John – Here's a guy, one of the reasons why I think his production was down is because they he played like 300 extra reps than he did the previous season because they had very limited depth there. And now you're talking about another one-trick pony in this Bryce Huff kid. Like you said, I mean, they, they fell on their ear, John, last year against the run because they ran out of depth and they ran out of gas and the linebacking core. I mean – do you think they've gotten better so far on day one of free agency? <clears throat> yeah, that's an a defense. Um, well, I mean, there's so many moves to happen. As I, I'm sure you believe the technique. Xavier McKinney deal is a true deal that is out there that they're pursuing. Yeah, they're trying. Yeah, they're definitely trying. I think they're trying to make Giants fans jump off bridges. Um, <laughs> they're trying to, and, and they're going to get a safety. So there's. They, obviously, they need to uh, improve on the back seven. The The question is how they handle this turnover on the edge um, because Sweat and Reddick, one of them's not going to be back. Maybe two of them's not going to be back. And how they handle that, I think, is going to say a lot. 
Carter's got to get better. Davis has got to get better. Um, they have so many moves they have to make. Nicobe Dean's got to stay healthy. They need another linebacker. They need a safety. They probably need another corner. Um, Vic will, will, will have them better prepared. I don't think there's any doubt about that. I don't think you'll see as many mistakes from that standpoint. Um, but yeah, way too early to say if they're going to be better on defense. They got a good player and they got a good pass rusher. Um, but there's so many moves that have to be done. And offensively, I mean, Saquon Barkley's better than DeAndre Swift, but you know, at what cost? Jay, I, I, John, check this out. Look, look, look at this here now. Let's just and I and, and I'm not even talking about cap hits here. So you got 25 million in a receiver. Your two tackles are north of 16 million dollars a piece. We'll talk about the extension on Dickerson, which is great, by the way. Now he's a 21 million and the highest paid guy. You drafted a second rounder to play center. You got a third rounder at guard. You paying 15 million for a tight end. You're probably going to on May 2nd pick up the fifth year option. And there's an $18 million, and I know that hits in 25. And they got a $50 million quarterback. I mean, John, Jesus criminy, man. <laughs> um, you're really loading up on that side of the ball, and it looks to me like you're top heavy on offense and you're shopping at the dollar store over on defense. Well, they were, well, they spent, Hop didn't come at the dollar store. Uh, and, and they're going to pay, I think, pretty big money for a safety. So, I, I don't know if that's the case, but uh, they were. So you think heavy. they change and pivot and spend around ten million, say, on the guy like from uh, the the Bolt, the kid Scott, from um, from the from the uh, with Stone from the Ravens, somebody like that, right? No, I think they're going higher. I I think huh. they're they're trying to get McKinney. They're trying to get uh, it, maybe Cam Curl if they can't get McKinney. I think they're going to be over ten million at safety uh, ultimately when it's wow. all said and done. Um, linebacker, I I don't know what to think until things develop. I certainly they're not going to be in a Patrick Queen conversation. Not that. How about high. A William Gay. Yeah, I mean, I I the kid from Tennessee, Al Shahir, I think makes some sense. Um, you know, uh, Baker from Miami, he's got a history with Vic. I don't know how well that went last year, but he's out there. So there's some mid-range guys. Blake Cashman, I saw, was a guy I liked, but he went to Minnesota. John, am uh, I saying his name right? Luvu? That kid uh, Luvu, yeah, he's probably the second one money-wise compared to uh, Queen. I, I think he might be, I think, the next level down from uh, – him is where I think the Eagles will land, but haven't heard anything about linebackers yet. So that's probably going to be second phase for the Eagles. Uh, the big talk coming in today was edge rusher Huff, which they got done. Safety McKinney, most likely. We'll see if they get it done. Those were the two names I heard coming into today. They got one. They're still in the conversation for two. Um, and then, you know, you got to fill in from there, but yeah, the big surprise was definitely Saquon. Definitely. The extension on Landon Dickerson. And I'll tell you something, John, you talk about a draft pick that they had a grand slam on, you know, anytime you can get a guy in a second, he turns out to be the highest paid player. He's one of the top players in the, at, at his position, 87 million max value, 21 per. Um, you know, you've got, it's almost like Upshaw and Shell to your left side of your offensive line. I mean, that was probably a major priority, making sure that that stayed intact for the next five to seven years. Yeah. I mean, there was never any doubt that they were going to get an extension done with Landon Dickerson. I mean, he's been eligible for, I don't know, a couple of weeks. <laughs> so, um, you know, they had a whole year on top of it to work with, but to get them done early is typical of the Eagles, the way they do business. Um, and, you know, it looks like a lot now, but you're already seeing some of the guards go and it's the, the market is exploding by the time two years down the road. That's how it works. 
guys will surpass land and, and it'll look cost effective. That's typically what the Eagles do. He was the second round pick. Remember, Devontae Smith was the first round pick. So to have an extra year to work with with Devontae because of the fifth year option, they don't have that with Landon Dickerson. Um, so they were able to get it done, but there was never any concern that they were going to not get something done with Landon Dickerson. Um, he's been a tremendous two time Pro Bowler already in the Spurs three seasons. Um, you know, perfect with Jordan Mailata on that left side. Yeah, he's a core part of this. And that 2021 draft as a whole is looking really good uh, for the Eagles with Devontae and Landon. And remember, Landon would have been a first-round pick if he didn't tear his ACL yep. in the SEC championship game. So the Eagles took a bit of a, a dice roll on that. They got a first-round talent early in the second round. He's like 37th or something, so it was pretty early. But um, And he's hit. And... Yeah, I mean, they they and they're going to get something done with Devontae too, but Devontae will wait for if he should wait for Justin Jefferson to reset the market and then everything's going to come up from there. Not that he's going to get that type of money, but he's got time to wait and bet on himself and he's going to get paid as well. Absolutely. You got CD out there too and him probably want to see what that number's going to land on out there. I also want to ask you something about Fletcher Cox. I mean, John, I said this about this guy. 12 years, spectacular career. One of the absolute greatest interior defensive linemen that the Eagles have ever had in the history of their franchise. As you know, I bring it up a lot. Jerome and I played next to one another, and he loved playing in Philly. And would I compare him to Jerome? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm biased. I'd probably take JB over him because JB was more of a flash player. But you have a guy that's complete as ever, can play the run, can pass rush, showed you about being a pro. I mean, what a great football player, John, he was for the Eagles last year and for his entire 12 years. Truly kudos to him and what he brought to the Eagle organization. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't say enough good things about Pletch. I think, if anything, somehow he's underrated. I, I joked if he put on a mummer's outfit and, and <laughs> had a podcast and, and had the personality, <laughs> people would realize how good he is. He's one of the best players in Eagles franchise history, one of the best draft picks in Eagles franchise history. Um, you know, people talked about Mount Rushmore, you know, with – and all do – even Jason Kelsey will admit – and Jason said there's two players that he he has played with that can play with anybody, regardless of scheme, coaching. You could put them in any system, they'd be successful. One was Jason Peters, one was Fletcher Cox. That's it. Um, and he proved it over his career, two gapping with Chip Kelly and Billy Davis. Jim Swartz, he had a love playing with Jim Swartz, as most defensive linemen do. And then with the big Fangio scheme, the gap and a half type system, he even excels in that late in his career. Unbelievable player, should be a Hall of Fame player. I don't know if he will be. Close. It's ironic because I think, in, and as I said, of the two that retired, and Jason's tremendous, but he's the better. There was a five, six-year span where he was the best pure football player on yep. the Eagles and including the Super Bowl 52 season. He was their best player on, on the only Super Bowl team in this franchise's history. And somehow he went through 12 years, and he's somehow underrated, at least by some. At least by some. Bryant, Bryant Young just went into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and I would say, you know, Bryant Young better than Fletcher Cox. And I think Bryant Young was a great player, came back from a catastrophic leg injury was great, played on some Niner teams that won a Super Bowl. I get it. I mean, but, I mean, Richard Seymour may be a tick better than Fletcher, but I'm with you, John. I thought he was better than Aaron Donald, and I'll say this why I say that. Well, no, I'm not going that far. Boy, I'll oh, tell you God. why. Well, oh, oh, Donald's a better pass rusher, but he can't play the run. They run at him. He's never been on a defense that was under four and a half yards per carry, and if you want to run at him, you can run at him. He's 270 pounds. He's six feet tall, and he's not a physical, defensive, run-stopping guy. 
And the reason I said this about Fletcher is because Fletcher was both. He could stop the run and he can rush the passer. Surely the greatest pass rushing three technique of all time is Aaron Donald. Sapp's probably the greatest complete three technique in NFL history. But this guy here, Fletcher Cox, he's one of those old school guys that could play both the run and the pass. Yeah, I'm with you with Fletcher. I'm not going to go with you with Aaron. Aaron Donald's one of the best defensive players in the history of football, period. End of sentence. One of the very few people in that conversation. He does it differently, but he can. nobody blew up. Nobody can wreck a game quicker than Aaron Donald. And when, when they do have trouble, a lot of times it's Aaron and the other guys not holding up. Um, yeah, he's he's on a different level. But there was about a four, five-year run where he was the best defensive tackle in the world, not named Aaron Donald. So it's one of those things, you know, here in Philadelphia, Charles Barkley was, you know, one of the greatest players in the NBA, but unfortunately he played in the same era as Michael Jordan. Um, and he was number two for a while. Fletcher was number two for a long while, and that's not bad. Um, and he was one of the best defensive linemen in, in football. Um, he deserves all the accolades in Eagles history. Um, again, one of the best I'm, I'm in the modern era, you know, it's Reggie, it's Brian Dawkins, and it's Fletcher Cox. Those are the top three. Two last questions for you here, and I want to expand one last thing on it. Chris Jones in his prime or Fletcher Cox in his prime, who would you draft? Slight edge to Chris Jones, but slight edge. That says a lot because yeah, Chris, Chris Jones, really I think, good. is going to the Hall of Fame. Chris is really good, really good. You know, Back in the day, coaches used to have to have conference calls with reporters like me and every single coach. And I mean, when I say every single coach, I mean 100%. When there were offensive-minded head coaches, we'd ask him about the game plan. What are you doing this week? What's, what's the goal? Every single one said block 91 first. That that was the first name on their mind. When people are game planning for you, that's when you know you're you're good. And that's every week. That was the opposing coach when they were talking about the Eagles defense. It started with Fletcher Cox every single week. Finally, John, at 22 with what they're doing, and I know what they're going to do this week, next week, leading up to April is going to be a precursor to what they do in that draft for three days. But just today on March 11th, you think they trade down, up, stay? <clears throat> is Do they go traditional offensive line, which they need some depth at anyway? Do they stay there or do they address the defense more in the draft starting at 22? Well, that's what I, I always laugh at. I, I get why people do them, but I always laughed at mock drafts before free agency. It's like, what's the point? I mean, it, 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 you know, that the, the whole point of the system is uh, you go through free agency. And by the way, I argue the NFL should have the draft before free agency, but that's another story. <laughs> you go through free agency and you see, you know, what happens. And obviously, you know, if you're looking for an edge rusher on, you know, March 6th, and you sign the biggest edge rusher in the class, well, you're not going to take an edge rusher in the first round anymore. Right. So that's kind of how it works. So it remains to be seen what moves they do. But just from the board, there are so many offensive tackles that are in the range of 10 to 20. Um, one of them will fall if you go back to 22 and that's an Eagles foundational principle. So you'll get good value, whereas they need a corner, for instance. But there's like four corners that belong in that conversation. And that means they'll get pushed up the board, and teams will get desperate and say, if we, we better go get a corner. So they're probably not going to trickle down. If So if you want a corner, long story short, you better trade up. Um if you're happy with one of the tackles, you'll probably get tremendous value by staying put. 
and get a really good player should probably go higher than where you get them. So tackle's a good bet if you're a betting man for the Eagles because offensive. there's so many of them. Yes, offensive tackle. Yeah, there's, there's so like you said, plus, John, the five quarterbacks they're going to take, you know, the five QBs, you know, you're talking about plus that's going to squeeze down the corners, the receivers, and the old linemen. You're going to pick a good old lineman up in round one and two. Could be even three that yeah. you're going to pick a pretty good player because, John, this is one of the deepest drafts at the old line I've seen in 14 years. Yeah. And especially in the first round, offensive tackle. I think Daniel Jeremiah had eight guys between 10 and 20. Well, eight teams aren't taking offensive tackles. <laughs> Absolutely. So. Hey, I'm with you, John. The Saquon Barkley thing, man. You you and I may be the only hey, get this. Everyone's throwing flowers at this thing here. I'm I'm more with you. I'd never thought he lived up to the number two draft pick. And on top of that, when you look at his history. I just don't see the production out of year one. I, 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 I he's, he's, well, it's spelled it help you. It's spelled help you, Dan. I mean, they, oh, no, they no, I've heard, hey, hey, John, let me just say this. I said something about the, the Bears having an interest, like how he has an interest in everyone. And you say this all the time. How he has it an interest about in everybody. That yeah, doesn't well, mean he's doing anything. No. <laughs> no. And so people are like, why are you? I'm not trying to do anything. Okay. I know polls. He's a good dude. I know people in that. I know Duke Tobin, like, you know, Duke Tobin, he, he's constantly looking around for guys. Duke's awesome, by the way, because he's got a staff of like three people where the Eagles got, how he's got like 23 personnel. Duke's got like three people. Hey, let me, um, let me tell you what Duke Tobin told me. He goes, because the thing up in um, Cincinnati, John, that they're floating around a $30 million deal in Minnesota for Jefferson. <laughs> they put the tag on T Higgins. T Higgins goes like this. Hey, um, you know, Hey, um, uh, hey, by the way, Xavier McKinney, yeah, just signed he's with, the with the Packers. Yeah. So, uh, he's off the board. Um, so you that's that one that kid stone back in there. Uh, I think they'll go for higher. Like I said, Cam Curl, I think it'll be a little bit higher. We'll see who they like. Potentially, they want to bring in a safety. They want to prepare, I, you know, they want to go younger. I still think Justin Simmons has something left. Um, but Xavier McKinney got $25 million in year one, so that's a lot of money. <laughs> a lot of money. Well, it's um, like Monopoly. John, thank you so much, my friend. As the news turns each and every single day, this thing's going to be wild, man, this whole week. At least they're taking swings. It's already wild. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Thank you, John. Don't forget, folks, Birds 365 in the morning. I'm sure the world will have turned by then for John in the morning. Thank you, John. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it, my friend. Yes, sir, man. Yes, sir. Xavier McKinney. He's an eagle. He's an eagle. Told you, Sil. Shut your face. Give me a break. The agent float. Hey, by the way, not to take a shit on LJ, because LJ just heard what a beat writer said in New York. LJ's not wrong. Okay? The agent floated that out to raise the price for the Packers. And the Eagles said, I don't think so. And they passed. Okay? 17 per year for Xavier. Oh! Oh, and by the way, John McMullen, thank you for being one of the very few people on Big Sills Island that thinks that the Barkley sign's a shit sign. It doesn't make sense. He's not that good a player like that. He's not. <laughs> He's not that good of a player. When we're talking 15 million a year, both John and I are on the same page, believe it or not. And we're not on the same page, but watch this. Oh my God, we got Saquon. I'm like, well, Saquon who? Oh my God. I feel validated. No, African surf. I don't need 
anybody to validate me. I validate Big Sills with a stamp. The Big Sills stamp. That's what I do. The Big Sills stamp. You think I need somebody validating me? that will be a far cry, Junior. Okay? You and John are just stroking each other's... Oh! <laughs> because why? Xavier McKinney went to the Packers? You lost him. Wait, you lose a safety you need, and you sign a running back you don't need. How you doing? <laughs> you sign an overrated running back and an overhyped one to boot. Saquon was the offense in New York. New York had an offense? So wait a minute. The quarterback and the tight end made more money than Barkley. That's what they thought of him. Darren Waller and the quarterback made more money than Barkley. And they let Barkley walk out of New York going, see ya. <laughs> By the way, don't let the door hit you in the, in the ass on the way out. And the Eagles signed him for $15 million a year. Two. Packers. Baby, are the Packers now players. Wow. They better use this dude like Shady McCoy for that type of cash. Damn right. Xander's right. This guy better be amazing in pass protection. He better have like 78 catches, 1,400 yards. He better look, hey, he better look like Brian Westbrook. He, he better look like Westbrook for that kind of money. We got two of the best running backs in the NFL, Hertz and Barkley. Barkley's never been one of the best running backs in the NFL. Look at his numbers. Dude, outside of the first year, he's never been one of the better backs. Look at his years. He's had two years of good ball in six. Look, I'm, that's not being made. That's not made up. That's not made up. Sills, I get it. You don't agree with it. But stop hating. I'm not hating. No, no, I can hate the deal. I can hate the deal. It just happened. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to drive it home. <laughs> so you never forget. Ever. I thought McKinney was coming here, but Howie decided only to pay a running back. So Howie missed out on McKinney for $17 million to sign a running back. Let me go here before I take a timeout. So Howie Roseman's thinking today was that instead of getting a safety that I really need in Xavier McKinney, who's getting $17 million by the Packers, he thought he would get an overhyped, overrated, often injured running back with incentives at 15-8 and thought that was more of a priority than adding a quality safety. <laughs> Where's the logic? Where's the logic? Your defense sucked. Your offense supposedly was top 10, but you thought to add a $16 million running back per year instead of spending that money on a safety like McKinney. Is that right? Even John McMullen, who doesn't agree with me, calls me shock jock sills. Goes, I don't get it. It makes no sense. Even if you, Arthur, think Barkley's good, how many people in here believe that Saquon Barkley was more of a signing priority than signing Xavier McKinney? And guess what he said about Bryce Huff? He's a one-trick pony. Well, shit, you got one already over there. And Hassan Reddick. That's why he 
and that guy's never been drafted. And you're gonna and you paying that guy how much? You're paying him big money too now, right? 17 mil. I'm okay. That's right. Xander's like this. They paid Huff Reddick money, and he's never been Reddick. <laughs> so really, quite frankly, the only really decent sign you've had today is the extension on Dickerson. Boy, you spend a lot of money on positions. You gamble with Huff. You sign a running back and you lose out on a position at safety. No, African Surf goes, Sills thinks he can be a GM. No, all you have to use is some common sense, dingbat. Think about it. Okay, dingbat. Since when was running back a priority on the team? At the, at the expense of $17 million, $16 million a year. I got to powder my nose. Gary Cobb's going to join us. Okay. No, 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 no. I, I actually, you're right. I do like the sign. But then when Xander and John put their spin on it, so you're asking Bryce Huff to do what Hassan Reddick does, and he's never been Hassan Reddick. That's a gamble. You're basically just replacing a player for the same money that you're paying one guy now. Is It's not an upgrade over Reddick or it may be actually be a downgrade. Huh. Gary Cobb, bottom of the hour. Woo! Eagles burning that dough. Maybe burning the 2024 season on March 11th. <laughs> oh, my God. Good night. Hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show.